Hey everybody, um, I'm sure everyone's been wondering where we have been. Oh man, i really been dreading doing this video. Um, I don't even really know how to start it or what to do because I've been feeling so many different emotions the past few weeks. And, um... I... It's really hard for me to even find the words. I apologize. Um, last time you saw me, saw us, Maeve and I were preparing to go to Dallas because we were Oh, I was going to take her for what I thought was a routine vet visit um, to the new vet that we found that Tupac and Beatrix have seen and to look at houses for moving and um, uh, the, I've had I really ask that you guys please watch this video all the way through so that you hear all the information that I have to say because there's a lot and I'm sure by the title you already know what I'm going to say but I want I want you guys to really hear everything um, surrounding what happened I'm sorry um I'm not I don't have a script or anything here uh, and I've been I have been talking to some of the page uh, the patrons on discord at least know what happened and I've been talking to them and they've been updated with everything and some people have suggested I use a script and I'm not gonna do that because I'm trying to be as transparent and real with you guys as possible and uh, these <laughs> this is the kind of stuff that happens that uh makes you know it's the reason why I say they shouldn't be pets I don't recommend them as pets and it's for sh it's for shit like this um I've had some concerns about Maeve almost since I got her that I've kept mostly to myself because I didn't think that they were uh I didn't think they were going to be threatening to her life God. Um, I'll start with everything that happened the morning after our the live stream you guys saw us in previously. Um, all four of us were in it. And we left the next morning for Texas. Everything was normal. Uh, you know. I, I keep a very, very, very close eye on the birds to make sure that nothing seems unusual. And I've, I mean, hell, I sleep, I sleep with Tupac and for a long time with Maeve in my room because I didn't want to have my eyes off of them. I was terrified that uh, something would happen when I wasn't around and I would need to react quickly to get help for them. And, um... So, you know, packed up the car, um, fed all the birds, Beatrix, Tupac, Maeve, all at once in the morning, like usual. Everything was fine. Uh, I noticed that Maeve ate a little bit less than usual, but not to the point where it made me have any immediate concerns. Um, I made sure that she got water, she took a, she, you know, burst it out of her cage like she always does out here in the morning first thing I do is she starts she may made her noise and you know started yelping I let her out um, she was basically she's basically been my alarm clock you know her call was what woke me up and prompted me to go care for the birds and my schedule was dictated mainly on her and uh, so Everything was normal. She even took a bath and everything out here like normal. Before we left, and then I got the carrier ready. Uh, I, you know, I already had everything else packed up. Got the carrier ready, put some food in there for her, um, and put her in the carrier. And I just thought, it's 
I didn't think anything of it. It's a normal trip. We've been back and forth to Dallas a million times. Uh, I had an ex-girlfriend that lived in Dallas, and we, me, Tupac, and Maeve would go visit her very frequently. Uh, it's nothing out of the ordinary for us to go back and forth to Dallas. And everything was fine. I was listening to a podcast. Um, you know, I checked back on her every now and then. Everything seemed fine. Uh, and about 20 minutes into the trip, I noticed that she had jumped down from the perch in the carrier, and it's a, you know, it's a fairly large dog carrier that I have a perch in, and then there's food, of course. Um, I noticed that she was on the bottom, and I kind of just, she was sunbathing before that, so I kind of just figured she was sunbathing, because sunbathing toucans look uh, weird. They, you know, they kind of lay over and they, they just act strange, and that's nothing really out of the usual, uh, or out of the ordinary for them to look like that, especially, you know, if they have any sort of exposure to the sun at all. You guys would see in the, in the video with when Tupac and I went to the blueberry bush, um, as soon as the sun hit him, he just kind of lay over to sun himself, because they just love the sun. So I didn't think anything at first, but then I thought, okay, well, you know, I'm not that far from the house. Um, let me just pull over real quick just to be sure, just to make sure that everything's okay. Uh, so I pulled off the interstate and, uh, you know, I stuck my finger in the carrier up to her beak and she kind of, she just, she just nibbled on it a little bit, just very gently, just to kind of acknowledge that she knew I was there. And I was like, kind of expecting her to jump up, so I was, I was like, okay, I'm gonna op I'm open the carrier and take her out. And I fully expected when I opened the carrier for her to just jump back up on the perch and, you know, everything to be fine. Um, she did try to jump back up on her perch, but it was clear that she wasn't balancing right. And that's immediately I knew something was not right. And, uh... I didn't, I didn't have any signal on my phone out where I was. We were, we hadn't even hardly left my, the town I live in, well, Shreveport, which is what I have to drive through to get to Dallas, which is the main city in my area. We had not even gotten through Shreveport and I, sprung into action. I didn't I didn't really know what to do, but I took her out I took her out and into my arm arms and I turned the car around and raced as quickly as possible as I could to the um, the nearest emergency clinic I knew of was back behind me in Shreveport or behind us. And I just I took her into the front seat and I took the one of the water bowls that I had taken with us. Um I, I couldn't comprehend what could possibly be wrong, so I didn't know. I had to just get her to the nearest emergency vet clinic no matter what, and just maybe I could prolong it a little bit enough to call the emergency clinic that at the vet that I go to in Dallas and try to get their advice, which is what I tried to do, and I just took her into my arms and I drove, and I'm normally a very careful driver, I drove very, very, very quickly. Uh, to the emergency clinic and unfortunately I had hit lunch traffic by that time or the beginnings of it and I couldn't get around to the cars um, I couldn't get around the cars to get to the, the freaking exit and I was so afraid at like looking at her that she was almost gone by that point and I didn't understand why uh, why she was and um uh so i quickly I, I almost missed the exit but i quickly cut in front of the cars that were there and i checked to make sure nobody else was exiting at the same time and i ramped i basically jumped the car off the interstate onto the on-ramp like like if this was the interstate and the on-ramp went off or the off-ramp went off this way i just jumped off there was a you know 
it went down onto the, uh, and it just had trashed my car. Um, I've never been in a, a collision or accident or anything before in my life, and I've only ever had my two cars, and I've put a lot of care and effort into my car, but I was really, you know, it didn't matter. At that point, I just wanted to get her, um, someplace that she might be able to be safe and um I trashed the car and the windshield was cracked and my roof was like just completely open to the air and I just uh, the car was limping along but I managed to uh get it down the road the rest of the way to the emergency clinic and I but by that time I just I knew it was probably too late and I just I ran um as quickly as I could into there and I just kind of had her cradled in my arms and I passed her off and they said we don't do birds I said I don't care do what you can and, you know get fluid in her I don't know what's wrong just do any everything you can and it was just it just wasn't enough and I, I didn't understand whether I don't know whether it was the heat of being outside was it it couldn't have been that it had been in way hotter weather it was only 84 um, it w was it the stress of being in the car? No, it wasn't that. I, I just could not comprehend it. But they, they came out to me. Uh, and I was on the phone with one of my bird friends just trying to, just panicking. And like, what do I do? I can't go through what I went through with Ripley again and I don't understand what happened. And, um, you know, the, the doctor came out and just said that she was gone. And, um... I knew something wasn't right at that point, and especially given that I had had concerns that I had expressed before, and, and even Maeve, Maeve being the one bird that I have that doesn't have, or wasn't supposed to have issues, she was the only bird that I actually paid full price for, and was supposed to be the ambassador toucan that I had that in contrast with Tupac and Beatrix and Beatrix isn't out here but Tupac and Beatrix back in the other room there who both have gone through a lot and have come out the other end um, and you know Tupac of course will never be the same but or will never be a healthy toucan but I didn't want people to see Tupac and think this is just how they are you know Maeve is more of a better representation of a healthy toucan or so I thought um, and that's when I'm gonna start explaining back what my concerns were initially because when I got her she seemed small and I'm not that familiar with red billed toucans because I haven't really seen many of them in person but they've been one of my they were my favorite toucan as a child and now they're tied as favorite toucan with Toko like Tupac is a Toko toucan. Um, they're always one of my favorite species, you know, and when I saw that they were available, I just couldn't pass up the opportunity because I've, I've loved them so much since I was a kid. My first, my first bit of toucan merch as a, as a child was this. I got this. I don't, you know, when I was, I don't even know how old I was, maybe maybe eight years old, something like this, at the Oklahoma City Zoo, when I was just a little kid, this bobblehead, it's a red-billed toucan I've had since then. And they've always been, you know, one of my favorite species. But the point I'm trying to make is I wasn't overly, and hopefully the camera's focusing in here properly. I'm sorry if it isn't. Um, <sighs> I've never seen one grow up on the internet or in person. I've never seen a baby one, really. There weren't really any photos a year ago of baby red-billed toucans, for the most part, or any comparison of anything like that. Uh, so I didn't, I didn't think that much of it, especially since she's female. Um, females are generally smaller than males. Um, but when I got her, she had these white feathers, or these white-tipped feathers on her wing feathers, which 
is not something a toucan has. They're jet black usually, except aside from the throat and the, the tail coverts, um, they're jet black. So, uh, with her species at least, and with most large Ranfasto species like Toco or whatever else, they have a white or they have a yellow throat. No white tipped wing feathers. I thought that was a little bit weird I, and I asked about it and the guy, the breeder, told me, oh, it's, it's normal. First he said it was normal and then later he tried to say there was some sort of deficiency in the, in the formula they were using uh, that caused the feathers to be that way, but they would grow out and this, that, and the other. I didn't think much of it. Um, and her beak did look a little bit, like it had a weird, it had this weird kind of bump on it when I got her, but I didn't really think much of it because I was like, okay, well, it's just gonna, it's gonna smooth out over time. I, I have I had a little bit of ignorance when it came to red bill toucans because I just hadn't had I haven't seen them very much before um, growing up or at all. Excuse me, um, man. Let me get a drink real quick. So there was that, and honestly, I didn't pay much mind to any of that again until towards the end of last year, maybe towards November, December, I started just thinking, well, maybe some beak developed and one side of it had these divots in it. And I'm sure you guys have seen it. I know some people have pointed it out before. Hopefully this is focusing properly. Is it? Okay. I had these weird divots on one side um, with no interference from me or anything. I mean, no, they have softer beaks as babies and, you know, you can damage them, but she never ran into anything or, you know, nothing was grabbing at it, nothing like that, nothing that would make that happen occurred. And I kind of just figured that eventually that it would smooth out, but it just continuously kind of got worse on, especially on her what was it her left side? I believe it was her left side that it was the worst on. And then there was one small one on the right side, but it seemed to be smoothing out. But the main thing I was worried about was her weight. Now I, I take I take weights of my birds several times a month usually, or a couple times a month, just to make sure they're not losing weight and make sure they're healthy. Um, and as I was taking weight, now keep in mind that red-billed toucans are considered the second or third largest, toucan, depending on who you ask, the second or third largest species of toucan, and they're almost identical in size to the second largest, the Swainson's toucan. And they all weigh different individually, but generally speaking, they shouldn't be too much smaller than a toco. Not, you know, terribly smaller, I should say. Not to the point where it looks like, like with comparing Maeve's size to Beatrix, for instance, and Beatrix's species is on the smaller end of the large toucan species. Uh, Maeve was smaller than Beatrix, and even though Maeve was only a year old, she should have been mostly fully grown by then. They still do grow until they're two, but for the most part, they're almost fully developed by one, at least as far as weight's concerned. Their build does continue to develop and stuff. But it had me concerned because I was weighing her and she was coming at it at 450 grams, 460 grams. And then eventually, you know, she stopped right about at 460, 470 grams. And based on the book I have, uh, I don't, I try not to go off of Wikipedia too much because Wikipedia can be unreliable, as everybody knows, on information. I have the Oxford book of toucans, aeroceres, and barbettes. I believe that's what it's called. Uh, it's a big textbook. Uh, it has uh, each individual species of toucan, and it has recorded weights and descriptions of different birds from that species uh, in the text under its individual species. And I was reading, I'm reading through the weights, female red-billed toucan. They're all somewhere around 570 grams, which is a hundred grams more than what Maeve is. And, and Maeve, through the year that I had her, had only gained about 30 grams of weight. So there's no way she was going to gain another hundred grams of weight in the next year. 
And that started getting me concerned. And then I started asking questions. I asked the breeder and the guy that hand fed her. And they both did not have any recorded weight of her siblings. And the breeder did not have any recorded weights of her parents. All, and he told me, just go check Wikipedia. And I was like, okay, well, Wikipedia is fine and good, but they inherit that kind of stuff from their parents. So what, what's the weight of her parents? I don't know. I don't know what the weight of her parents is. And I started getting a little frustrated at that point. Because I don't understand who, 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 who raises birds professionally and does not have weights of... Maeve, as a baby, first of all, should have been weighed daily and then fed uh, a specific amount of formula according to her daily weight. Because toucans do not have crops, they can be more easily aspirated or basically just suffocated by the formula if fed too much or they could die if fed too little. And it's about like 10 to 13 percent of their body weight uh, every two to four hours every day depending on how old they are of uh, formula so it's weird to me that they wouldn't have recorded weights of her as a baby because I wanted to try to map her growth process and see if there was some sort of trajectory that I could predict and, and take this information to the vet and say, look, her parents are this weight. This is what she was as a baby. This is her siblings' weights. You know, what's going on here? Um, but they couldn't give me the data, which made me a little uneasy. Uh, especially when they told me to check Wikipedia, which, by the way, Wikipedia says the average weight of a female red-billed toucan is 580 grams, which was over... 100 grams what Maeve was at a year old and this may not seem like that big of a deal to the average person but if you know birds you know that you keep track of weights to make sure there's nothing wrong and sometimes that's the only way you can actually tell if something's wrong because birds hide whatever sickness they may have very well they don't want to show weakness because if they show weakness in the wild they're going to get picked off by a predator first and targeted first so they don't want to show weakness so I, I try to really watch for stuff like that and keep you know record of weights and all that kind of stuff you guys know how careful I am about that sort of thing I don't think I need to repeat it but um, it gave me some concerns and I didn't I didn't really express them because I didn't think I thought okay well Maybe she's going to be a runt. She's going to be smaller than other toucan or other red-billed toucans. She might have a weird beak. But I didn't think it was going to threaten her life. I really didn't. And I didn't want to... I didn't... Like, even the sponsorship... I didn't even have a sponsorship available on Patreon for Maeve. Because I was like, well, Maeve is a, you know, captive-bred, healthy toucan. So she... She doesn't need that kind of care like Tupac and Beatrix do. Because I've, I've spent thousands and thousands on them individually just trying to get them healthy. And they, everyone knows the host of issues that Beatrix and Tupac have. Um, and Maeve was supposed to be the control group, I guess you'd say. Or, you know, the, the contrast between them. Like, here's a healthy toucan. She's bouncing all over the walls, being crazy and acting like a crackhead. But Tupac here is just, you know, calm and chill the entire time. That's not normal for a toucan. Um, I'm so sorry, guys. I'm trying to get my thoughts in line here. <laughs> Maybe I should have written a script. This video is going to be forever long. Please just bear with me. Um, good lord. Okay. 24 minutes. Um... Anyways, I was supposed to take her January or February of last year, or not last year, this year. Then COVID hit, and the border between Texas and Louisiana was shut down for quite a long time. Everything was shut down. I didn't want to leave because uh, I have heart, I have very severe heart problems. I've had five open heart surgeries and uh, a whole 
wealth of other issues that I, I come with as a person and I didn't want to risk catching it and potentially putting my life in danger. So I was, I mean, for a long time, my sister was bringing me groceries and I just never left the house. I just stayed with the birds all day, every day, maybe Beatrix and Tupac, because I didn't want to catch it. And this is going to come into play later as I continue the story. Um, because after Maeve passed away, like she did, and it was so obvious that I couldn't think of anything that I had done. I immediately, the next, I came back home and I, I called my vet in, in Dallas, told, him what, told her what happened. She said, you need to get a necropsy done. I said, can you guys do a necropsy? They said, we can, but it's only going to be a gross necropsy. You should go to Texas A&M and get everything you can possibly get done to find out what happened because there was clearly something going on here and I had talked to several experts about uh, experts that will remain unnamed for now but they are the leading experts in the toucan community uh, about her issues previous to her passing uh, and they were concerned about it as well which has made me which is what made me really want to get her to the vet as soon as I could of course we were stopped by COVID but I went as soon as everything seemed to have blown over that was my first priority was taking her and then, of course, we wanted to move closer, or we wanted to move to Dallas to begin with, to be closer to the vet for stuff like this. So I can, if there's ever a problem, they have an emergency clinic for exotics and birds specifically, and my vet could see her in an emergency situation or any of my birds if need be. But she said I should take it to Texas A&M. She said very specifically, and I kind of, I knew what to do immediately because I made the mistake with Ripley, uh, freezing, I froze her body and I ruined any potential, uh, concrete necropsy that we could have done because I didn't, I just didn't know any better at the time, but this time around, I knew what to do. And I kind of went into mission mode because I was angry. I was like, there's got to be a correlation here. Like between my concerns and this just happening out of the blue when, you know, I just, first of all, I'd just taken Tupac in the car, you know, I, like two days beforehand for an even way longer time and he was fine and Maeve had been in the car a million different times with no issues. So I knew it wasn't related to any sort of stress of traveling. And even if it was, that's, that's really odd. It's really unusual. So uh, I, I took her I had to, I basically have had for the past few weeks to suck up my sadness, and that's why it all kind of just started coming out. And it's probably going to come out again, because um, I haven't had a chance to be sad. I've been angry. Um, and here it comes again. Okay. Uh, I'm sorry, guys. I'm I'm really trying my hardest to explain here. Uh, I I was I went into mission mode, and I I took her body the following day, the uh, following morning after her passing to Texas A&M as you know four or five hour drive maybe a, a 10 hour round trip uh, thankfully I have a friend in Houston I could go and stay with which is about an hour and a half from A&M and College Station but I could stay there for the night and uh, so I, I took her there as quickly as I could I had to rent a car because my car was trashed and I had to drop it off I rented a car and took her there um, as quickly as I possibly could because it's very time sensitive when it comes to stuff like that. And uh, I got everything I possibly could done at the suggestion, or I went and did tests suggested by my friends who are uh, experts, and um, so they could look at the data. And um, based on the data, what happened was that she somehow got salmonella and died of enteritis suddenly in the car and I had I mean you guys know how absolutely careful I am about stuff like that any sort of bacterial infection it's one of the reasons I say do not feed them pinkies or raw meat or even bugs or you know worms or insects I'm, I'm afraid to feed them personally any sort of thing like that because I've heard of toucan specifically dying of bacterial infections from raw meat 
So I sanitize everything and clean it all. I wash all the fruits. You know, I, I'm very careful about cross-contamination. I don't put, I don't mix cooked and raw meat. I don't put raw meat in the fridge with the fruit. I don't, uh, if I have hot food out, I do not put it in something into a refrigerator while it's warm. I wait for it to cool down to room temperature and then I, you know, put it in the fridge after that. I'm very, very cautious about any sort of potential bacterial anything. And it, as it turns out, the reason that she was able to catch it was because, well, first of all, salmonella, uh, the way my vet was saying it, salmonella is on like everything, and it's not uncommon for even us, our animals, to get it and just, it just fight it off, and you don't even notice it because your immune system fights it off. But because Maeve was the way she was, she was small, she was underdeveloped, and her immune system was compromised because of it. It was suppressed. And she was able, it's a miracle that she lasted as long as she did. Because if I had kept her outside or anything like that, or you know, even fed her raw meat at any point, she would have been a goner. And that's why Beatrix and Tupac are fine, and she is not. Because there was something there that I, I didn't know that her she could have been immunosuppressed. I thought maybe she was just going to be smaller, like a runt or something. But and this was this was part of my friends' concerns when I brought them, or when I t originally had t told them about Maeve anyway. And I, you know, I didn't I didn't even want to mention it because I didn't want to worry you guys. When I first had the concerns, I didn't think it was going to be that big of a deal, and I was actually kind of. I was already angry about it because I was like, I'm going to take her to the vet and the vet's going to say she has all these developmental problems because she had a bad early nutrition as a baby or something like that. And I went back and after, after I started suspecting maybe it was related to her nutrition as a hatchling, like, you know, hand feeding. I started going back and looking at videos and stuff and trying to, because they told me they used Missouri soft bill formula which was the right formula at the time they now have a fasted formula which is great uh i was looking at the pictures or uh, uh the video that i took while i was there and now the videos i'm removing the video so you guys can't even find it on the channel anymore but i took a video while i was there and next to the incubator if you look very carefully you see parrot formula next to an entire incubator full of toucans who are not in the cytosine family with parrots. They are pisiforms and they have a completely different diet than parrots. Completely different. They're sensitive to iron, all kinds of other stuff. They grow more quickly. Uh, you know, they don't have a crop. All kinds of other differences between the two orders. And so this made me concerned even back then when I kind of suspected that happened because that explains why she had the white feathers to begin with and it explains why she probably didn't get the nutrients needed. Now there is a chance it could have been a congenital thing. I don't know because there's a lot of factors that go in to toucans here that unfortunately it causes a lot of them to die within the first year of their life and most of the time it is directly related to nutrition directly related. Either the parents have bad nutrition and then they created unhealthy offspring or the babies were fed an improper nutrition or not they were given away before they were weaned because it takes you know I mean the, the babies can stay with their parents up to six months and still be fed by the parents up to six months of their life. This is stuff that I've recently learned and I didn't even know back then because Maeve was I thought she looked a little bit scraggly and still maybe why you know, she needed a little more weaning but uh, I gave them the benefit of the doubt and really what I should have done is immediately feed her formula myself when I got her but I didn't I didn't have that foresight back then I didn't know so I'm learning things constantly every day and this is unfortunately another one of those experiences where I'm learning something and I've learned a lot from this experience and I've had a whole wealth of emotions that uh, have been mostly anger 
And, and in addition to sadness, because this shouldn't have happened to Maeve, she did not deserve this. Uh, I, she did not deserve to have a bad nutrition starting out and be ped, fed por parrot formula by an experience, a, a breeder that should be experienced and know that there is formula made for birds like her that would be infinitely better and not cause these problems because there's problems from the very start with her having white feathers which I've the breeder said oh we see this common I've never seen I've never seen it on any other bird before and I showed it to other people they haven't seen it before seems like it was lacking in beta carotene or some I, I think that's what it, it, they told me yeah beta carotene or was it vitamin A Anyways, the formula was lacking one of those things which caused her feathers to be that way. So there, already, there was already freaking evidence from the start that something was not being put in her body that should have been there. Um, as a baby. So I wanted to get, I wanted to take the time to get the data firmly so that I could tell you guys what happened exactly. Because I didn't want to, I didn't want to come out here and tell you that a bird that you loved as much as me, you know, um, passed away unjustly, and it really sucks. Because I, I talked to the breeder and I told him what happened, and I'm not, I'm not going to say names here. I'm not, I don't want you guys to start any sort of witch hunt or anything like that. I don't want anybody trying to track this guy down or anything like that. I'm not going to mention any names. But I talked to him on the phone. And I mentioned uh, I had evidence that the guy that he had hired to hand rear the birds was using parrot formula. And I thought initially, well, maybe, maybe this guy had lied to the breeder. And I gave the breeder the benefit of the doubt and thought, okay, maybe he was the, the hand feeder was just inexperienced and lied about the formula he used. He said he was using Missouri, but he wasn't. He was using KT parrot formula. And so I'm telling, I, and I sent, I sent him a nice email before we talked on the phone because I didn't want to call him and catch him off guard. I wanted him to have time to collect his thoughts. I didn't want to attack. I didn't want to burn bridges. And I didn't want to be on the offense because that's not the kind of person I am. I don't want to, I don't like confrontation. I, I stick here at Tupac. Are you trying to get down, buddy? I'm sorry. I know I'm talking for a long time. I just want to stay home and help birds and keep to myself. And that's it. I don't even have many personal relationships and I tend to like to keep it that way because I, uh, I don't like to be involved in stuff that's dramatic and I just, I just want to be with my birds and that's it, you know? And, um, so I was I was trying to be as non-confrontational as possible, but and I, I don't think the phone call I had with him was entirely that way. And there was some weird stuff that he had said otherwise that made me feel a little weird. But uh, the main thing that I took from it was when I I mentioned the parrot formula, and when I did, he was like, "Oh yeah, that's what we use." And I was like, "You use parrot formula to feed toucans?" Oh yeah, I've been using that for years and blah blah blah. And I was like, you don't use the rimfasted formula from Missouri. Rimfasted, by the way, is what toucans are. They are rimfasteds. Um, they are part of the family rimfastidae. Yeah, I'm trying to make sure that I, I got that right. <laughs> My brain is so scrambled, guys. I'm so sorry. Uh, they're part of the family rimfastidae. Uh, and they have a formula from Missouri specifically made for ramfasteds, and before that they had formula that's low in iron made for soft bills. Uh, you know, specifically for iron sensitive, sensitive birds. So... <sighs> I mentioned this to the guy, and I, I promise you, he, he took the, he said he didn't, he didn't know what I was talking about. And he took the time while he was on the phone with me to Google it, to make sure I was being right. And I just generally didn't like the tone of the conversation. And I feel that it is a huge problem in the exotic 
And just exotics in general, not just birds. I know you want down, buddy. Here, come here. I'm sorry. Here, let's go. Let me put him down. Come here. Let me get you some food. I feel it is a huge problem and not just the exotics. I mean, not just the exotic bird community, but exotics in general, that these people see the price tag attached to these individual animals and they treat them like products. And I, and you guys know I don't favor, I don't even look favorably upon captive breeding to begin with. I see it as sometimes I see it as a necessary evil, I guess, but I thought that it, they would at least treat them like animals that needed to have proper diets and the proper expertise and respect and care given to these individual animals that are living, thinking, breathing beings with their own emotions and intelligence and they're being treated like products and the guy can't, doesn't even know that Ramfasted formula exists. Are you kidding me? You breed toucans for a living and you don't know this stuff exists. And yet you're the expert. And now I'm going off on a rant. I might have to cut that part out. I probably won't. Because I'm not using names here. But I want you guys to know how angry this makes me. And how not okay it is. Because Maeve did not deserve for this to happen. And none of these, ber none of these birds, Beatrix didn't deserve to be forced to take, be taken out of the wild and sold to some teenage girl that kept her in a guinea pig cage. And now she has muscle atrophy and she had two respiratory infections when I got her. And in addition to the people that buy these animals and don't know what they're doing, apparently there's also breeders that don't either. And they breed these animals for a living and somehow they, they, get, they get approval uh, to import the animals from South America to here to breed them and they can't even feed it the right formula. And I know for a fact that within this past year, there have been several toucans and people who have approached me and I know they care for the birds well and yet the birds have died prematurely for seemingly no reason and most people do not have the forethought to try to get data immediately. They mourn their loss, they don't even confront the breeder because they don't want to be involved in that sort of thing and I understand that. I understand it completely. When Maeve got her neck, when I got Maeve's necropsy results back, I had my expert friends look at it and she was extremely low in body fat and in spite of being within normal range for iron she had hemosiderosis which is an iron storage disease so not only was she not gaining weight properly her um, and her immune system was suppressed but her liver also can even handle the normal amount of iron that a toucan is supposed to have she didn't develop right she was the friendliest freaking toucan ever. She made me question whether I was wrong to not recommend this pet so often because she was, she was quite frankly, she was the most, she was the friendliest toucan I'd ever seen in my life. She never tried to bite anybody, new people, me. She never tried to bite anybody. She was annoying. She pulled my hair. She took my glasses. Don't get me wrong. She was noisy, but she was just the most outgoing and friendly little bird that you could possibly, you couldn't even comprehend it with toucans because toucans are generally just such assholes, to put it lightly. They're assholes usually. And Maeve was just not that at all. She just, man, I'm gonna, I'm gonna miss that bird so much. <laughs> I don't think there'll ever be another one like her, you know? And my relationship with her was so much different than even I had with Ripley. Or Tupac, as much as I love Tupac and Beatrix, there's just, there is something different about raising a bird from you know you get it as this little baby and you watch it grow up and develop and they just grow to love you and you grow to love them and um i didn't even have her a year you know meanwhile i've had tupac well over a year and he's perfectly fine and he came to me with uh, he still has uh you know, an unlistable amount of health conditions, and yet he is perfectly fine sitting down there eating his papaya. And, uh, what gives? I don't get it. I don't get it. It isn't fair. I'm tired of losing things that I care about. 
And I'm not a perfect person. But man, this has been the worst. This has been probably the second worst year of my life. I lost, uh, I lost a person that I cared about more than anything earlier this year. And I lost, uh, Maeve now. Oh, and I didn't even tell you about the part where I got coronavirus when I went to take, <laughs> I went to take Maeve, Maeve's body, to go get the necropsy done. I caught the freaking virus that I've been avoiding so much, and I've been sick, I was sick for two weeks, almost, here. Good lord, man. What? It's just, it's like, it's like this is a joke. It's a punchline, you know? Like, I can't even, I don't get it sometimes. I really don't. I really don't get things things have just been so and there's stuff that I can't even tell you guys about that I've gone through that it's just been it's been a horrible past few years for me and it's been it's been so hard not to give up and I've wanted to give up so bad after this stuff happened come here Tupac you want to come back sorry guys the camera ran out of memory and I had to it was a whole thing um Anyways, I've wanted to give up. I've wanted to give up so much, and I've just... It's been, it's been difficult doing this, quite frankly. I've, I've gone through a long, difficult road even to get where I am now. And the channel's not that big, but you guys are, are so kind and devoted to us. And especially our patrons. And I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna ask anything of you guys anymore, because or with with this video um Maeve's body and data has been donated to Texas A&M for their education uh, upon my request and the data that came from her I am donating to uh an expert that is currently researching toucan diets and to try to find out why specifically the large toucans are dying um, and most of it's, tr and why is it nutrition related? Because even people who use proper nutrition, like myself, we don't, it's not even completely proper. It's not the right thing completely because there's so much we don't know about these birds. And, uh, you know, quite frankly, in a perfect world, I wish, I wish they were all in the wild where they belong and that we did not interfere with this stuff. And I know you guys have heard me say that a million times, but... The, the very least I can do, Maeve did not die in vain, and I, I think she is, the data that we've collected from her is going into the right hands, and hopefully in time we will figure out why stuff like this is happening specifically. And now we know, even, even toucans that are fed the right diet as babies, like I was explaining, many times have issues too, and it makes me wonder if maybe Something like that happened with Ripley, but I didn't I didn't have the foresight back then to understand all this stuff. I've learned a lot the past few the past year alone. I have learned so much new stuff. And I'm constantly changing depending on new information provided to me. And I'm trying my best to give that information to you guys. And this is not gonna be an easy road. This probably won't be the last time that this happens, unfortunately. I wish it would be. You know? Quite frankly, I thought if I was going to do a video like this, it would be about Tupac, but this dude's probably never going to freaking die. I don't understand how this guy lived in the dirt for God knows how long with Bumblefoot and cataracts and arthritis and calcified joints and uh, inability to fly, all, all the weird stuff that he has. But he's still kicking, aren't you? I don't know, are you just like a Terminator or something? You are a strong bird, in spite of being so silly and just chilling all day. You're very strong. And I kind of wonder if some of it has to do with the fact that maybe they were wild caught, you know? Maybe they got the right nutrition as babies from their parents and now they're stronger because of it. You know, with Beatrix was wild caught. Tupac may have been, he had an open band on, on his leg. Um, he may not have been, I don't know, but I just want to present this information to you guys, and I want to let everyone know if you if you have a toucan or Arisari, or you know somebody that does, 
and the bird dies prematurely and for seemingly no reason, even if it just dies out of the blue for seemingly no reason, I will personally pay for the necropsy. If you contact me on Instagram or through email and tell me what happened and refrigerate the body immediately, not freeze, refrigerate it immediately, get it to a lab, I will personally pay for the necropsy so long as we can give the information to people who can research and find out what is going on with these birds. That's the only thing I ask in return. But I think it's really important that we, I find a way to help collect information for these people who are trying to figure out what's going on. So I'll make a separate video about that. We're going to hopefully get back to live streams. We might move, I don't know. It doesn't look like we're going to move at this point, which is another bad thing to add onto the list of bad things going on. We might have to wait another six months to move. I'm trying my best, guys. I really am. Um, we'll get there. I think the, the, lo the road has been hard, and I have changed and evolved so much the past few years doing this, and I've learned so much about these birds and just the dark the darkness that lurks under the surface of the bird community and there's there's so many people out there there are so many people out there that genuinely truly care about the animals and want to do the and do want to do right by them i believe that there are, i've met many of them but there are also people out there that either want attention or they want money one of the two but I'm just, I'm gonna do my best guys. And you know, I have limited resources available to me right now, but I, I thank you that you guys have made this possible. I'm sorry that this happened. I really am. I wish I didn't have to tell you guys this and break your hearts, but um, her, she, her death wasn't in vain. And I, I fear that this won't be the last time something like this happens, or at least not the last time I encounter something similar. And it's going to be a long road ahead, and but all I can do is just promise you guys that I'm going to give the birds the best possible life I can, no matter the circumstances. I'm going to try to take in as many needy birds like Tupac and Beatrix as I can, and I may rethink my position on having captive red birds at all. You know, I don't know. Um, I'm going to have to really interrogate. <laughs> the breeders for sure. I would like to have one healthy one just for contrast with the others, but I don't know. I don't know what the answers are. I wish I did. I'm learning. I'm learning at the same time you guys are learning. You know, as soon as I learn something new, I tell you guys. And as soon as it's just this line of, that's, that's all I can do. You know, I'm not perfect. I'm just, I'm just a guy. I'm just a guy by himself, uh, with some birds in a house. And I, I do my best because I love them, and, and I truly believe in what we're doing, and I think that maybe in the future we can make a difference in uh, the exotic pet trade and really educate people and show them the horrors that happen, you know. And because the birds don't deserve it, they're not, they're not like people, you know. They're, they're good, and people aren't always good. And it sucks. And I've I've been through my share of my share of that. But I'll leave you guys with that. We will do a live stream for two. I'm gonna have to do a live stream for Tupac's birthday because it was his birthday when all this stuff happened, and I he kind of got swept under the rug and forgotten about for a period while I was dealing with everything. And it's been it's been just a hectic few weeks, and I'm so sorry that you guys haven't heard from me and I'm sorry that this video is so freaking long but I hope it answers all your questions and it really gives you some insight into how who I am as a person and and uh, just maybe you learn more things about the birds I'm not gonna monetize this video uh, I'm not gonna ask anything from you guys um, the only thing I ask is that you don't give up faith in us and um, join us for Tupac's live stream birthday, and we'll do we'll do a memorial stream for Maeve eventually, and maybe maybe we'll donate some. We'll donate all the uh, donations from that stream to Toucan Rescue Ranch or something in her memory. But I'm gonna leave you guys with that. We will see you very soon.
and uh, hopefully we'll be somewhat on track from here on out. But love you guys so much, and I'm so sorry that all this happened and I had to break the news to you the way I did and that I kind of left a lot of you in the dark for a long time and I had good reasons because I wanted to make sure the information was solid before I presented it with you guys. So, um, like I said, love you guys. See you all very soon.